Good morning. Welcome to another move sesh. Sorry about yesterday. Well, I'm not sorry, but thank you for the, well, I am sorry. <laughs> thank you for the understanding about yesterday. I uh, was tired, you guys. Uh, tired today too. <laughs> not sleepy tired. I had actually the, the best night's sleep last night. Oh my gosh. I didn't have to get up ear as early this morning as I usually do. I'm saying this in my back of my head. I'm thinking Jen Sharp gets up at some ungodly <laughs> hour. I can't remember how early she said she gets up, but I, I don't get up that early. But I think the thing is, Jen, I don't know if you have this issue. Somebody's been getting mats all messed up. Um, I would be happy to go to bed early so that I could get up early, but having teenagers makes that difficult because they have activities to, like I didn't get home till I think 10.30 the other night, which isn't that late, but then by the time I, I can't just go to sleep, you know? Anyway, um, so before I start rambling about God knows what comes out of my mouth, um, just a reminder to take everything that we do at your pace, right? Uh, we're warming up right now, so assess kind of how your body feels. Note where you're feeling maybe a little bit of stiffness, if you have any kind of soreness or um, stuckness, I call it, right? Like sometimes your hips feel a little bit tighter, sometimes my spine gets feels compressed, sometimes my feet, you know, all the fun, fun things. Just kind of be aware. My legs are feel like giant cement bricks right now, full of <laughs> waste. Uh, just be mindful, how does my body feel today? Did you not sleep well? Maybe you slept amazing, maybe you feel fantastic. Lean into the warm up, allow the moves to kind of come out of you instead of forcing. Um, you'll end up having a better workout. Um, allow your mind to kind of embrace, hey, I'm about to do some work here, <laughs> um, that kind of thing. Anything I do, like as we get into the second and third round of warm up, I will be increasing the intensity a little bit and adding some hops, adding a little bit of uh, what's the word, <laughs> higher impact moves. And you don't have to increase with me, you can keep it at this low intensity. So if I'm doing butt kicks, you can do butt kicks like this. Oh boy, my legs are pretty pooped. I just fit, I'm finishing kind of a really big block. So basically last Wednesday, Wednesday I did two runs, about 18K. Thursday I did two runs, 18K. Friday was my mountain climbing adventure. Did not do very much running, but we climbed like that mountain was, it was no joke you guys, holy crap. Um, so seven, seven hours. And then the next day we did another climb, which was about four hours. Then I drove home the next day. So Sunday I had off, I only did my one mile. And then Monday I did 30K. And yesterday I did 20K and today I've done 10 so far. So that's why, you know, this has been a big block that today is the final day of this, of this big block. Um, and I'm so ready for some rest, <laughs> but I feel good, you guys. But anyways, yesterday it was just kind of like I could feel. I got back from my morning run, and the thought of just lifting up a weight, I just was like, just not today. <laughs> not today, sir. That was what my body was, not today, ma'am. Um, I was gonna do upper body, and actually, kind of like still thinking about I think what we're going to do today is you guys sorry for the fact that we're going to do Tabata because I want to do something um, I want to keep my strength workouts up for the next few weeks so you guys it is four weeks Saturday is well I will be lined up and starting my race so just a little over four weeks to go um, really two and a half more weeks of actual training. So the next two weeks, next week is gonna be a lighter week.
and the following week is going to be a really heavy week. I may have to modify or cancel workouts that week. My plan is to do four really long days in a row. Um, and the reason for that is because my race, I'm anticipating taking me four to five days. And so I want to practice being out on the trail, you know, half, kind of like a mini practice of the race, but not, not as much, obviously. But in my head, I'm kind of thinking four 40 kilometer days in a row. Um, so, now I may split those days up, so I may do, say, 20 or 30 in the morning, uh, and then, but I'm not sure I'm going to do strength workouts that week, so I may have to give you guys some replays for that week. Um, the week, so basically I have this week, next week, and the week after of training. And then I start what's called tapering, which means you cut, did I miss? I missed these, right? Those felt good, <laughs> what I just did. Um, tapering, you, you cut back, so you basically start, start a process of rest. So essentially the hay's in the barn, and the goal is to rest, recover, um, absorb everything that I've done. Can't believe it. I can't believe like when I was driving home from New Hampshire and thinking five weeks. So basically, you know, add a week and I'm done and it's, it's done. I like, can't believe it, but feeling really good. You guys like I went through a bit of a, I don't want to say panic attack, but not panic attack. I went through kind of a like, oh, and I'm sure there'll be many more of those between now and, and race day. But I went through kind of a mini, oh my God, what am I doing? I can't do this. I don't want to do this. How do I get out of it? Can I pull out? Can I quit before I even start? And uh, I just had to work through the feelings, right? Which was really good for me. And I feel um, a lot better now that I've worked through those feelings. Like I talked to my friend Kathleen who came to do the training weekend with me. Um, I talked to my friend Mike who is one of the people coming out to pace me. Oh, I talked to my husband. I talked to myself on a live yesterday and you know I think one of the lessons from this past weekend is well two lessons one is <clears throat> when we have fears or things that have are causing us stress or anxiety we tend to I don't know if you guys feel like often we feel like we shouldn't have those feelings right like I'm supposed to want to do this race um, I'm supposed to, I'm not supposed to be thinking, oh, I don't want to do it. But truthfully, anything that's going to be really challenging and therefore really rewarding in life is going to have some um, feelings of trepidation attached, right? Like, you can't do big things in life can't change like to change you have to do new things to change you have to go through hard hardship right adversity you have to face fears and face difficulty and overcome it and that's how how we grow and change in life if we just stay in our comfort zone we stay the same um so those feelings are completely like why wouldn't you have those feelings like your brain, of course, is going to say you don't want to do something that's going to cause you discomfort or pain or, um, you know, and, but yet we feel like we're not supposed to feel those feelings, so we shove them all down, which is kind of what I was doing is I was trying to deny them, 
hide from them. And if there's one thing I've learned over the last couple of years, it's like speaking it out loud, speaking your fear, giving voice to what you're afraid of. I think we think that when we give voice to it, we validate it. But I think what we actually do is we set it free. We get it out, right? And so we think that if we keep it inside and we don't speak it, we are denying it, but we're actually growing it, if that makes sense. Good morning, ladies. I'm gonna open my garage. And so it's really important when something's bothering you or causing you any kind of negative emotions, I think, to be able to, to, be able to speak it. And so that's been really cathartic for me. Um, I have a friend who's actually signed up for the same event that we put 200, who I have a, a heap load of respect for. Okay, so we're gonna start with, We're not going to do legs today. We're going to do legs Friday. We're going to do legs Friday because I'm going to have my cooler with me. So I'll have this stuff. Sorry. I'm, I'm modifying the fly. We're going to do upper body. So I'm grabbing my bench because we're going to start with rows. Good old rows. We'll alternate each side. So it's been, it's been really good and I feel like a million times better having gotten those thoughts out and sort of admitted that I have them and people saying, yeah, of course you feel that way. My, so my friend Matt, all right, you guys ready to start? How are you this morning? Ladies, again, once again, sorry that I had to bail on you yesterday. Um, and I'm not available tomorrow because tomorrow we have to leave at 5.30 in the morning to head to Michigan. But Friday, I'm gonna do a workout from the hotel possibly Saturday, I haven't decided yet. Okay, that way it keeps me, keeps me moving. Um, so yeah, so my friend Matt, now let me just give you a bit of background on Matt. Matt is probably one of the mentally toughest humans I know. He literally signs up for you know, the hardest possible events that he can find. This is one of my sons. Um, and just kind of grips through them. Like, he is, he's a badass. So he's doing Bigfoot. And I had several moments during my training where I thought to myself, oh, I bet he's training way harder than I am. And I know how he trains. He does train. He trains, trains, he trains like, uh, he's told me some of the stuff he was doing and I just shook my head and thought, oh my God, like I couldn't, I can't even, I couldn't even dream that up. Um, so I've had several moments where I thought, oh, he's training harder than me. Um, and also wishing that I had his fortitude, like his mental fortitude, his tenacity. And so ironically, he reached out to me to pick my brain about some negative thoughts he's been having and doubts around his race at Bigfoot. And it was like, wow. It was like a hammer over the head of a reminder and isn't this so true for us for all kinds of things right where we think so and so has it all together I wish I could be more like so and so um, and then find out that that so and so isn't what we thought and so it just kind of debunks or kind of I don't know like the, I can't think of the word but not debunks, not demystifies. It just destroys kind of, oh, 
So that wasn't what I thought it was. And yet you base all kinds of stuff around that thing. If, if that, does that make sense, you guys? So like, thinking about, so we had this long conversation and he's been struggling mentally. And it turns out he's not. He's not, you know, like he's human. He's no better than I am. Um, you guys, I used to be, like, when I think about how, and again, this is my memory. I think we have one more, right? Yeah. I was hoping maybe it was wrong and we were done. Uh, I used to be so mentally tough, like, and honestly, I'm probably remembering it that way, and I probably wasn't <laughs> at the time, any tougher than I am now, but I, um, I feel like it was. And I feel like not anymore. And that's what scares me is I don't think I, you know, I think a lot of it, what used to drive me is something to prove. I really wanted to prove to people that I was this badass. Um, it, it, was, it was all driven by insecurity and a desire to be to be something, and if I was able to complete these races, like it made me special, it made me important somehow um, in my mind, right? And and then you achieve other things in your life, and you don't have that need to be expect, um, respected and admired, and uh, you don't have that need to prove yourself as being... <laughs> valuable and I don't know if I'm making any sense but that drove me so when things got hard I was like no I gotta do this because you know this this defines me and I don't feel like it defines me anymore but yet I think I gotta do because I think if I don't finish that defines me I don't know so it's like but it's interesting that in talking to Matt he now is kind of in a different place he's in a place where I am so I thought that mental state isn't permanent. Whatever mental state we're in isn't permanent. So we're gonna do um, presses next. What time Friday? Oh, I was afraid you were gonna ask me that. I haven't decided for sure. I'm thinking 8.30. How does 8.30 work for you? I, had, I was going to post it yesterday, but I wasn't willing to commit yet. <laughs> um, I feel like I just need to get settled to figure out. Okay, what should I do with this? I'll stop it like this. I'm thinking 8 or 8.30. Because I probably don't need to run that day. Just my, okay, let's go. Just my one mile. <laughs> I'm taking a couple days off, you guys. So we're going to do one side. Pulling, press, pull, press. Oh, I just got really hungry. That's the other thing I'm like, can't even eat enough right now. <laughs> I got more than enough stores on my body though. Like, so it's like, body, you don't need food as much as you think you do. <laughs> Use up what you got. Um, anyway, so the lesson was, so the first, the first lesson was speak your fears. Don't, don't try to deny them thinking that they're, you're not allowed to, if you don't feel like you're allowed to have that thought, that feeling, whatever it is, you need to speak it because by not speaking it, you think you're ignoring it and it'll go away, but it actually grows inside of you. When you actually admit it out loud, I think you release it. This is, I'm saying this, I'm saying this out loud and I'm thinking, dang. Because isn't it true that you get over one fear, there's another one right behind it. <laughs> there's no shortage of fears. And so the next one comes up and I gotta speak that one. And I just gotta speak the heck out of my fears leading up to my race or every negative thought. Say it, get it out. 
Um, and the other one, the other kind of lesson is, we think, we think those fears and those feelings that we have are ours and ours alone. And we think, we feel ashamed. They make us feel ashamed. We're not supposed to have those fears. We're not supposed to feel that way. And yet, when you speak it and share it, you find out people, other people feel the same way. Like I find out Matt has the same, and all of a sudden you realize you're not that special, right? We think we're so special in our problems, and yet our problems really probably can boil down to, you know, all of us having, having essentially the same problems. They look a bit different, right? Like, but at the end of the day, if you dissect what we're actually worried about and what's actually bothering us, problems are probably pretty much the same. Whew. One more. They're moving slow for me today. So yeah, so I think probably 8 or 8.30 Friday dawn. Um, trying to think. I. It's just me and Grayson going. I can't imagine. Like I'm actually looking forward to some early nights and some good, really good sleep and some rest. If I go with Chris, he likes to be social. I like to be a little bit social. I really like the parents on Grayson's team, so I probably will be a little bit social, but not too social. <laughs> early, early evening social. Grayson will want to hang out with his friends, but he's 15, so at least he's old enough. I like can just let him pretty much kind of go. He wants to go to uh, a game. Some game, I don't even know what. And I know you have park run on Saturday, so I know you can't do that Saturday, uh, Dawn. I'm not sure, Betty, if Saturday's any good for you. I'm not 100% sure. I In my head, I, I'm kind of 50-50 on adding the Saturday one in. Okay, we are going to do a leg one, that, or a leg. I'm thinking in my head core. I don't know why I said leg. We do core one next. So we're gonna do um, skull crushers and hold boat. How's everybody, how are you guys doing on your iron will? I gotta admit, I completely dropped the ball on my, but in all fairness, I'm doing a heck of a lot of other stuff, so. Um, it's no excuse, it's no excuse, but, okay, gotta reach my. So you can keep a slight bend. One of the ways you can modify this is you can bend your knees if you need to, to make it a little bit easier. You also don't have to hold a weight. You can um, put your head up or down. So skull pressures um, work your triceps shoulders, but also I like them because I feel like they work my core a little bit as well. Next week should be normal. I have 
to leave, I go to Pittsburgh next weekend, so I have to leave around uh, Wednesday. So I'll be doing workout from Pittsburgh on the Thursday. Hi. So next week I think should be good for three, three workouts. The following week will be the week that I may, I may have the, I may not do any, or if I do any, it'll be kind of later in the week because my goal is to do the the runs, the three runs, Monday to Thursday. what I end up coming up with because what what I usually do um, in the weekdays is I go out at seven and I run I mean I could run for two hours but my goal will probably be get 20 to 30 in in the morning and that doesn't give me enough time unless I start earlier so Betty are you at the cottage right now it's been a weird weather summer so far, eh? Don't you find, like, I find that it's not as hot as usual. I think one of the reasons I was so tired Monday was the heat. Sorry, Tuesday. <laughs> chest so you're gonna be back on the bench or chair or table or whatever you guys use either is good okay um yeah it's been a weird so it's been a weird weather uh so far this summer don't you find like it hasn't been super hot um we get like a heat like humid and heat and then it kind of just goes away i don't know you guys fine? Okay, so next up we're going to do chest and flies. I'm not very creative today, am I? Sorry. <laughs> Grab my dumbbells. Okay, so do you come, you go back and forth, eh, Betty? I think if I had a cottage, I would, like, not leave it all uh, summer. <laughs> I guess you have to come back to your house at some point, right? I'm really missing my trailer, I gotta say. Like, I have a, bought my RV, I think it was last year. Or I think it was last year. Okay, down we go. Um... Haven't used it since. I've used it twice. Like, it's so sad. <sighs> but literally, like, I'm away every weekend in July for three. Three of the weekends were for baseball, and then one weekend was for my own training. I'm not complaining, you guys. It's It's been an amazing summer so far, even though I guess it just started, but it's flying by. Um, yeah, poor trailer. I haven't even, like, de-winterized it. <laughs> I'm debating, so I used to, with my old trailer, um, which was 
quite a bit smaller than the one I have now. Oh, I am feeling these today. With my old trailer, I took it down to Florida for, we would camp at Disney for probably eight, eight to 10 nights, and then stay at a resort for another eight to 10 nights, whatever. Whatever that looked like back then. Um, but last year, with it being just Dixon and I and nobody to drive down with, like normally I would drive down alongside my dad or my brother-in-law, I decided not to take the trailer. And I'm already kind of thinking about next March, whether, I mean, having not used it at all all summer, I might see if I can take it somewhere in the fall. Fall camping's amazing. I've always wanted to actually go. We usually shut it down Labor Day, like that's it, pack the trailer out. But um, so hard to get reservations now too. Like I don't know if it was like this in the past, but I find like you go to make a reservation. I mean, for electrical sites at least, there's. Slim Pickens, if anything. Darlington is like half an hour from here. And I can't even get in there on weekends. Oh, I thought that was the last one, but no. <laughs> Such luck. This should be the last set. One more run to do, you guys. I can't even believe it. I started this vlog last week and, and uh, I came home from my weekend and I was like, okay, <clears throat> do a long run Monday. Just, it's kind of like, <sighs> one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, and down to one more 10K run. And I get a rest. And boy, have I earned it. <laughs> uh, oh, do you not have laundry up there? Or is it just, are you on a well? Um, two-day training adventure like we did our seven hour day and then a four hour day and then we started to drive home so we were gonna that was our treat night and I was allowed to have wine and I thought no I don't even want it I had one beer I was too tired to even have I bought two beers <laughs> I was too tired to drink the second one so I literally had one beer um, okay we're gonna do bicep curls and we're gonna do flies I am going to bring in over a couple of different weights for this one those flies always get me. And then we'll finish with one more core. So we've got about 10 minutes to go. All right, ready? Okay, so starting with uh, bicep curls. I just grabbed two of the same weights. Whoops. <laughs> no, I didn't. I hate bicep curls. I don't know why. I don't know why I find them. They burn. I think they just burn. And then, and I don't like burning. <laughs> okay. So flies. 
try to keep um, like a bit of an arch in that lower back. So cocking the butt. One more. And then, then I arrived home and Chris said to me, beer or wine, you want beer or wine tonight? And I said, no, just beer. So, so I sound like, oh, I just flipped my alcohol addiction from wine to beer. But the thing is, beer I can have or not have. I can have one and not need more. Um, like it, it just doesn't. And I think that's the thing. I think I finally come to the conclusion that Yes, I love my wine, but I love, you know, I don't know. I also find that wine, the last couple times I've had wine, I haven't slept well. And I didn't even have much. I only had like, I think one time, I think I only had like a glass. And I just, no, I, it's not, it's not that I, I noticed my heart rate's higher. And... I was actually listening to a podcast about, what was I listening to? What were they talking about? Anyways, they were talking about, um, oh, they were talking about sugar and the body processing various types of sugar. And they brought up alcohol. And if you drink alcohol, you know, in the evening, or any time, actually, it doesn't matter when you drink alcohol, your body, I was only half listening because I was running. But I kind of thought I heard them say something about um, when you when you consume alcohol, your body has to process and digest and deal with that before it can do anything else. And so you inhibit, I guess, a lot of the bodily functions, the regular bodily functions. And it makes sense. My friend Steph recommended a book, and I want to. It was something about. It was called the Naked Truth, or it was all about how the body processes alcohol. And she's a, she's a fellow wino, like she loves her wine as well. Um, and she said, it's not preachy, but it really makes you second guess, like wanting to consume alcohol. And so, I don't know, I don't find beer does that to me. But last night, last night I thought, oh, I'll have a. Riley and I had our Yellowstone night. It's my third time watching Yellowstone. <laughs> Just love it. But his first time. So we're watching Yellowstone. And I was going to have a beer. And he's like, no, I just had tea. I just can't believe it. I think I'm finally, like, it's funny because, you know, once upon a time, I did not drink wine <laughs> all the time. It's kind of one of those habits that creep, creeps up on you and all of a sudden, and I know I'm not the only one. Again, this is one of those things that you're like, you keep under wraps, you, you hide because you're ashamed, and yet so many people have the same issue. And it's about, it's always with wine. Like, you don't hear, maybe it's just females. You don't hear females <laughs> over-consuming beer usually. Do you? I don't know. Oh, nice. Oh, very nice. Then you're never gonna leave. Okay, so we're gonna finish with core. Um, since we're doing upper body, we're gonna do sp uh, spider plank as one of them. And let's do plank as the other. Be good for my leg mobility too. So lifting. Squeezing those shoulder blades so chest is out. Nice long tailbone. And then we're going into low plank. <clears throat>
my coffee yet <coughs> today, guys. Biocell and trim. The biocell trim set is on sale today and tomorrow. That's the thing. I gotta actually get some work done today and tomorrow. I'm driving tomorrow. It's a lot better when Chris drives because I can work on the way. <laughs> So I think with the the pure with the trim comes with a free wrinkle guard, which is kind of one of our um, best kept secret products. People who use that, oh my god, they love it. It's kind of like a. Oh, oh I'm pooped, you guys. Um, yeah, it's not one that it, it kind of gets overlooked a lot. And then, or I'm getting the Sport. I love the Sport by so Like, I could literally chug that whole bottle. I think it's so delicious. A lot of people don't like, don't like it. It's their least favorite. But it's my absolute favorite of all of them. Like, it, to, to me, it tastes like, um, like a tropical punch. That's what it tastes like. And when it's cold and when I'm training, and I swig mine right into the bottle because it's like just mine. <laughs> and so I have to stop myself from like, like I think it would be so good over ice. <laughs> and that one comes with, um, you can't get the trim with that, just the biocell. But that comes with the chocolate whey protein with it, which I also love. Betty, what I do, I found a trick on the weekend. I mix the chocolate whey protein with the creamer and the greens and make myself a really nice on-the-go uh, protein drink. And I just shake it up in a shaker bottle. I took it on the road, it was a test because I think I'm gonna use that during my race. Because I saw, I watched online this guy that was doing um, this, he was doing the Colorado Trail, I think it was, or the Arizona Trail, I can't remember, but this like 400 mile, anyway, he would drink collagen along the way and I thought, oh, like I wonder if drinking, consuming collagen along the course of my four or five days would help with muscle repair and prevention and a breakdown and whatnot. So I thought, well, if he did it, I'm gonna try it. So I'm gonna take the, that was one of my thoughts is I would mix the creamer with the protein and the greens to have some kind of nutrition in me. Okay, let's do 10 push-ups. I don't wanna do these. <laughs> All right, let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That wasn't so bad. 10 squats, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Dawn, I'm trying to organize another hike. I think it's probably going to be that last weekend in July. Um, when I'm done my training and I'm around, um, yeah, for sure, I'm gonna plan a hike, because that'll be so good for the legs. Okay, boat. So when the timer, when the buzzer goes, keep holding, because it's only 20 seconds, we want 30 seconds. What are we missing still? We did plank. Burpees. Gonna do our 10 burpees. I was gonna totally bail on burpees and tell you guys you're on your own for burpees today, but. Um, oh, keep holding it, keep holding it. 
I mean, come on, it's 10 burpees. I can handle 10 burpees, so. We did our core. Am I missing anything, buddy? Let's go, let's finish with those blasted burpees. Just clearing some space here. All right, let's go. If somehow I find a camping spot locally for the weekend, like I'm thinking Darlington, I won't because that's a long weekend. We might change the location, but my last count is this is five, I think. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Last one. Ten. Oh, spell. <laughs> oh. <sighs> we did it. Another. Oh, I forgot to play it. Another one. Seriously. He came skulking into the garage with it. And I caught him and he said, oh, I knew you were going to say something. I said, oh my God. He said, it's for Renell. It's from his parents' house. Three. Three TVs back there, you guys. Three. I think he's got a problem. <laughs> All right, have an awesome day. I'll see you guys Friday.